are you ready for cooking lesson number two? Today I'm going to show you how to do a meatloaf that is thebomb.com without a recipe. Because I'll tell you what, we have spent enough time with this and what we need are recipes that work quickly, that satisfy our families, and that are easy to do. That's what this is all about. But first I wanted to show you my broccoli sprouts. These are my sprouts that I'm growing. It takes two, uh, about three days to get some sprouts and I wanted to show you them because this is a great way to get nutrition into your family. It's quick, it's cheap, it's easy. These broccoli sprouts I have had for two years. I bought them off of Amazon and same with these little trays. It's super simple, you soak them overnight and when you soak them overnight, then you put them out onto these trays and you just water them every day. Let the, the trays automatically drain everything. And in just five days, pretty much, you know, three to five days, it just depends how much sun and what have you, you've got sprouts. It's a good thing. And you need all the immune building stuff you can get, okay? All right, so today we're going to be making meatloaf. We're gonna do a meatloaf. And I wanted to show you as well, you can also do meat cupcakes, <laughs> which sounds really disgusting, but this is just a faster way to make meatloaf, okay? So this is an hour and a half, this is 45 minutes. It's half the time. All right, let's talk about this first of all. First of all, first things first, you're gonna be using two pounds of ground round. I want you to be using about 80%, 85%, um, fat in your ground beef. You're, we're talking cheap ground beef. And the reason why, the fat is what makes it taste good. I'm sorry. And it also get, makes it flavorful. It gives it, you know, it gives it the, the non-dryness that you want. Um, that's a really important factor. The other thing is that we need to be thinking is we're making, this is not just seasoned hamburger. We need to bind this and make it work. The binder is some kind of a um, flour or a breadcrumb rather, um, or I'm using almond meal. That works really well. Um, the other thing is I've got a meatloaf, a hot melt meatloaf, that I actually use ground up pork rinds instead of the breadcrumbs. Or you can just use breadcrumbs. And the reason I'm telling you this is because there's a lot of flexibility. You can use oatmeal as well. I've done that before. Um, you can use pretty, you can, you can do crackers if you want, but you just need about a half, a third to a half a cup to the to the two pounds, okay? Just keep that in mind as far as your, you know, the binder part. The other part of the binder is the eggs, and that's two to three eggs. I've got nice large eggs here, so I'm gonna go with two eggs. If you had small or medium sized eggs, you'll wanna go with three. And the other thing is sauteing the onions, which I'm about to do. And, but before I do this, I've got everything everywhere, so hold on here. I'm gonna put some onions in a pan and let them get started. And I'm gonna give you a lesson on how to chop an onion. Let this get going for a minute. Okay. Now, Obviously, I have clean hands, right? <laughs> I'm going to show you the rest on how to do. I'm going to put this whole thing together for you. Plus, another super great trick, I have some vinyl gloves that I keep just for this purpose. I put them on, and then I get in, and I mush up my meatloaf and take them off and throw them out because the best way to, to get a meatloaf mixed is to use your hands. And I sincerely don't want to put my hands in the meat. So, so you get a knife. Right, and this is called a santaku, which is basically a Japanese French knife. You want a nice French knife, a big knife. Not a carving knife, not a paring knife. You need a big knife, okay? Then you're gonna take your onion, which has been peeled and what have you for this purposes so I can show you how to do it. And using your hand as a claw, the hand that you cut with, you see where my hand is? It's right up onto the blade and the handle. So I have control. And then I'm gonna go, I don't know, can you get in a little bit closer? Then I'm gonna do this. I'm going to create, turn it around, and I'm gonna create that one way. Create 
more lines the other way. If you use your hand as a claw, if you get too close, you just give yourself a manicure. If you've got your hand out like this, off go the tips, okay? Then you turn it on its side, and again, see, there's my claw. There's your cut. How do you like that? All the way through. This is how you do it fast. Same thing. And at this point, when it starts to get a little precarious, you just turn the whole thing over, give it a chop one way, and you do like an elliptical, like this. Chop, chop, chop. And then turn it around and do it the other way. Okay? You see how quickly I did a whole onion? That's the way it works. Now in this, there's, we've got about three onions cooking because onions make it delicious. And you do, I've got a little ghee, and ghee is like a clarified butter. It takes out the milk solids. And again, I use ghee because it adds dimension and makes it taste delicious. Did you have a question? Was there a question before? Earlier question about the uh, pork rinds. Where do you get them? Oh, this came from Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. Or you can buy pork rinds in the grocery store and then just put them in a, into a plastic bag and rolling pin them. You know, that's one way to do it. But the, Marla, Marla's the one who brought these over. So, while the onions are cooking, and we're gonna wait, let those really get nice and caramelized. And caramelized means that they're gonna get brown. It brings the sugar to the top of the chop of the chopped onions and it helps to bring out the flavor, it brings out the natural sweetness that is in the onion. And it adds such a dimension to the, the meatloaf. It really does make a difference between using um, saute onions versus using raw onions, okay? So now let's start with the meat. First of all, we have two pounds, like I said. Now we're gonna add all the goodies. I use a couple of shots <laughs> of Worcestershire. Remember, we're not measuring, we're not using a recipe, but Worcestershire does add a little bit of flavor. I'm gonna say it's a good teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half. Another question? A comment about the pork rind. She doesn't think it sounds healthy. Okay, that's fair. You can, you're, you're welcome to that opinion. It's, it's a good way to do hot melt or to do keto, okay? All right, that's fine. And then we're gonna do garlic powder. And again, that's gonna be about a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. You can go as crazy as you want to on that. Then for the thyme, I use thyme. That's about three-fourths of a teaspoon. And what I do is I rub it in my hands and put it in here because that releases the essential oils and it makes it that much better. The next thing I do is I take fresh pepper and I give it a super good grinding. I just look at it and I figure about a good half teaspoon. And then the salt I put in my hand and I'm using a pink Himalayan salt, healthy, which is about three fourths of a teaspoon, okay? So that's everything except I'm gonna add the eggs in after I saute. Do you see how I'm doing this all at one time? Look how quickly this is going. Onions are just about there. We're gonna give them another minute. Okay. One egg. Two eggs. Now, my suggestion for you is that when you're opening your eggs, this is just a hint that I learned when I was um, first starting to learn how to cook, is to bang the egg on the countertop, not on the side of the bowl. That way, if any kind of a shell gets out, uh, it doesn't go into the bowl, or it also makes a nicer crack. And just, you know, don't be afraid to crack it too hard, but also don't crack it too hard, or you will have a mess on your hand. 
Now we're looking at about a quarter of a cup to about a half a cup. With an almond flour that I'm using, I'm going to use, and this is about right here, this is about a quarter of a cup scoop, and I'm going to add about a half a cup. We are not doing brain surgery. I'm going to say that repeatedly to you over and over again because I want you to understand how loose you can be with these kind of recipes. They really do work that easily for you, and they're not exact. They don't need exactness. Okay, so this is good. Onions are done. You turn off this. You put in about a quarter of a cup of water because, believe it or not, the water adds just a little bit of lightness to your meatloaf and makes it lovely. You don't want to add too much, but on the other hand, you don't want to add too little. And of course, I brought my, got to use the big skillet, which is going to make me require holding it with two hands. <clears throat> Get the rest of those onions. The onions really make a meatloaf incredible. Okay. all of that work at the gym paid off, <laughs> I think. Okay, done. Done, done, done. Three onions, too. That was, that was three medium-sized onions, or you could do one big one, one small one, but what we're looking at is getting it nice and oniony, and again, it's that sauteing of the onion ahead of time that adds the flavor component, and then when you it's basically almost like deglazing a pan when you put the water in there because now it's adding um, another flavor component. So now I'm going to glove up. This won't hurt a bit. <laughs> Any other questions there? Okay. Okay, and d don't forget too, we have um, our frugal ebooks. And the frugal ebooks are $15 a book and it'll take you through a whole season of good, healthy, yummy recipes um, that are flexible just like this. I want you to learn how to be flexible when you're cooking because if you don't have something available, like if you're saying, oh, I'm going to have to go get almond flour, but you have oatmeal available in your pantry, use oatmeal instead. It will work. You know, binders are binders is the whole thing. Now, 325 is what you want to set this for, um, set your oven for, and of course you want it preheated. As you're going through, you can see, if you want to come in closer, Mr. Cameraman, you can see that I'm just kind of squishing it with my hand. And I don't mind because I've got my gloves on. <laughs> Once upon a time, I used to use a, keep a box of gloves like this in my car to do my gas. And I keep them in my pantry so that I can do meatloaf without gagging. I don't want me, I'm sorry, but I just don't want stuff up in my fingernails. And this is the best way to do it. You can get it, you can see how well it's done. Look, isn't that nice? Let's scoop the sides, give it another mush, and voila, meat loaf. So we're gonna do, we're gonna, I'm gonna start with the meat here. And what, if you ever do this and you run out of, um, cut, you know, meat to put in the pan, Put a little bit of water so that you don't ruin your thing. And you're gonna stuff this in and give it a tap, but don't pack it too hard, okay? Meat, meat, meat. Any other questions? No? Okay, almost done. Almost, almost, almost. There it is. See, meatloafs, little babies. And the rest is going to go in here, which is going to be a tiny meatloaf because I really did push that up. Usually what I do is I fill this meatball meatloaf pan first, and then I'll fill that one. But this is fine. I mean, you know, this is not going to be 
a problem. Understand that you're going to get a lot of grease floating to the top. What I do with that is I let it cool to a certain degree as much as I can. And then from there, I will you know, tip it and take it all off. And then I'll put on top of that, I'll put a little bit of a, um, I'll put a little bit of a grease thingy on there, a little paper towel. Yes? Why do you not pack firmly? Um, if it's too firm, you'll have too much in there, and then you're gonna have a grease explosion. You don't want it too much in there. The binder's what's gonna hold it together, okay? Then the ketchup, now this is a Heinz organic ketchup, and I'm, <laughs> the thing that I like about this is one, it's organic tomatoes, and two, it has um, no, um, no corn syrup or anything like that, high fructose corn syrup, but still, it's pretty high in sugar, so you don't wanna to use too much of it. This is why we do it as a glaze, okay? This is the old fashioned kind. And then, see how my decorating skills come in handy? There you go. And that, my friends, is how you make meatloaf. And I just want you to see the time that it took for me to do that. I did it in, in about less, pretty much 15 minutes, 20 minutes. It's easy, it's fast, and then with your leftovers, what you're gonna get is you can take this meatloaf, you can do meatloaf sandwiches, you can do leftover meatloaf as just leftover meatloaf, you can crumble it up, put it in a bowl of soup. Um, meatloaf is incredible, and so are meatballs. You can make this into meatballs too if you want to. But this is this is just the whole thing with, meat, with meatloaf. It is absolutely 100% a good comfort food and everyone loves it. You can use any ground meat you want as well. You can use chicken, you can use pork, you can do whatever you want. The ingredients are flexible. And I hope you see how easy it is to make a meatloaf without a recipe. Now don't forget, if you wanna go get one of our frugal eBooks, you can go to savingdinner.com forward slash frugal. It's right there. And you can see all the different recipes that we have. We list out all the recipes and everything. It's a great way to stretch your grocery dollar. Planning your meals is gonna help you to stretch your grocery dollar. If you don't know how to cook, just come here every day at four o'clock and I'll show you what we're having for dinner. This is what we're gonna have. And um, you know, we have lots of salad stuff here, so definitely there's gonna be a salad on the menu. And you know, anything that you have, you can add something green, though is always good. Do a starch, um, some kind of a starch for the family maybe mashed potatoes, a baked potato, some rice, whatever it is that, that floats your boat. If you're keto, fine. If you're low carb, fine. You know what to do. Double up on the grains, it's that simple. But this is a good family meal and it's something that will serve your family and it's something that you will enjoy for the leftovers as well. If you have any questions, just put them right here. If you want to get a free menu sent to you that has every style of eating possible, vegan, vegetarian, paleo, low carb, keto. What am I missing? Classic family. Just go to savingdinner.com and we will send it right to you as soon as you sign up for our daily dish, which is our newsletter. Lots of valuable information and we'd love to have you as part of our Saving Dinner family. Thanks for um, being with me today and do share this with friends of yours who need help with cooking. We're all about helping you to be better at home. Take care. Peace.